Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is a Synology Rackstation RS 3621XS Plus. And it is outfitted with 12 SATA 5200-480G SSDs in it right here, and they're configured in RAID F1. And I also have a Synology 25 gig network card installed on this. Now, this system is really nice. We've been testing it for several weeks. We've had no issues with it all. It works as expected. Matter of fact, it works really surprisingly well. And I've got benchmarks that I did, and I'll leave those linked down below. I also did a test on NFS versus iSCSI benchmarks with the RAID F1, RAID 6, and RAID 10. So a couple different configurations on here. So I won't be diving much into the benchmarks in this particular video because I have them in the other video where, well, I link to them so you can dive through and really look at all the details of different performance metrics. But... This was provided to me by Synology as a demo unit that I don't get to keep. So this is completely my own thoughts. This is not sponsored by Synology. I do have a content ethics policy of how we create these videos. It's on my website. And of course, it'll be linked down in the description like it always is with my videos. Easy enough to find. Before we dive into the details of this, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project, there's a hire button right at the top, which does include Synology Consulting. If you'd like to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Let's jump right to the technical specs. We have an Intel Xeon D1541, 8 gigs of DDR4 memory, and 4 memory slots. We will definitely have to address this though. Please select memory modules for optimum compatibility. Please select Synology memory modules specifically is what it says there. I bring it up because I know some people think it's just a cash grab by these companies to force you into using their specific or proprietary memory. It's not that it's specific or proprietary. It has been tested and known compatible. This is one of those things when you buy enterprise equipment, you spec it out with the company you're buying it from and you want to have the least amount of problems. And Synology has tested it with their memory, therefore they know it's one less thing to troubleshoot is whether or not the memory you put in has some compatibility that causes the crashing that you may be experiencing on an application. It's just one less thing to troubleshoot, so they do push for their memory modules to be used. So just one of those thoughts on that. I don't think it's as much of a cash grab as it is a support headache grab. I mean, you as an IT search writer, if you're one of those people watching this, you're going, yeah, I try to get everything spec exactly right, so I'm not troubleshooting any of those problems there's enough other things to troubleshoot. I get it where they're coming from on that. It has 12 drive bays expandable up to 36 with their expansion units, uh, two and a half inch or three and a half inch hard drives. This is one of those spots though that you'll need more memory. If you're doing one petabyte of storage, you will need a 64 gig of memory. If you're doing 200 terabytes, 32 gig of memory is required and 108 terabytes will, I guess you can get away with that if you're running only eight gigs. My guess is the application should be running such as active backup or any of the other Synology surveillance applications. You're probably going to run into more memory needs on those applications as well, not just if you're putting a lot of storage in. Of course, the storage is hot swappable. And we'll talk about the drives really quick here. This is kind of a pain in the butt. Works best with Synology drives. I really get that Synology wants to use their drives, one, for predictable performance, two, so there's a warranty on them that's five-year warranty, and three, so if there's a firmware change to the drive, it can be pushed through the Synology software. All those are really solid reasons. I just wish there was a checkbox that says, I'm an adult and I'm going to put in a different drive and I don't want the error message that says this. This storage pool contains one or more unverified drives. That's the annoying message you'll get if you don't use the Synology drives. They have an explainer on it. They link to a help article. I get it. And usually if I'm selling something like this, I'm going to buy the Synology drives with it. I just wish there was an option to use the non-Synology drives as well. A little annoyance I did find with this system. Ultimately, it's up to you whether or not you think that's a deal breaker with it. But hey, those are my thoughts on it. Now let's talk about the back of the case here. We do have four RJ45 1 gig LAN ports with link aggregation and failover support, and two 10 gig LAN ports with link aggregation and failover support. Yes, 1 gig ports are still relevant today. Why? Because despite the myth that's propagated on the internet, 4K and 8K cameras, it takes quite a few of them to even saturate a 1 gig port. So this is ideal if you're setting it up for surveillance station and you want to have a few different ports dedicated to different networks that are dedicated to cameras without having to split it off as a VLAN on your 10 gig network. I think it's still a pretty rational use case to have those four on there. But for those of you that need the performance of 10 gig, yep, it's there, it's built in. As I said in the beginning though, I opted for 25 gig performance and so I put a 25 gig card in the system. Now this system does have dual power supply units. They are hot swappable 
And the hot swappable is really easy on these. I say that because lots of companies have it, but how difficult is it to slide them out and slide them in? The fit and finish is really nice. It didn't feel, I don't know, like I was going to break something taking them in and out or having to slide them in where some of them you have to really jam the power supply back in to get it to work. No problem. Slid out really smooth. Feels really well machined. Now, one of the other things about this, it has hot swappable fans. You can just pop the fans in and out with the kind of weird mid-level case removal. But I like this. This makes it really easy if I need to change out a fan. Easy to slide this in and out as long as you have enough space above to get this open or on proper rails to slide this out. It doesn't require any downtime to swap the fans. Now, when you're taking a look inside the machine and a look inside the chassis here, it's really clean, really well made, but there is one thing missing. It does not have any native built-in M2 slots, but that can be facilitated by getting an M2 D20 add-in card. Easy enough to put that in there and add them. I kind of wish it was built in the board, but hey, I guess we can't have everything. But we do have a 25 gig card from Synology that I did add on here on the board. Overall, I think inside the chassis is nice, clean, very easy to get to everything. When the system first starts up, it has a rating of roughly 81 decibels, but that quickly quiets down to about 65 after it's been sitting for just a few minutes and idles that way, unless you're putting it under heavy low, then of course the fans will ramp back up. Now we are running DSM version 7.01 for 2218, the latest version available as of November of 2021. I'm not going to dive deep into all the packages this comes with because, well, it's the same as it does on many of their other Plus models, all the active backup features, hyper backup, and many of the things I've talked about, and I'll leave reviews to those down below. Over to the drive management, though. I like the way the new DSM-7 does this across a lot of their new models and even the older ones once you get dsm7 you get a cool view instead of just listing the drives it kind of shows a layout or a picture of the system so we know it's in bay one bay two we know the health status of the drive and as i mentioned earlier you will also know if you put a non-synology drive in there that's where that error message shows up if you look through the logs one of the things we did test when we were degrading the drives and plugging things in and out was what happens when you put in a non-synology drive well yes you can actually resilver it and just deal with that error message so for some reason it past the five-year warranty and you have to replace one of those drives with a non-synology one yes that is possible and as well as scenarios i wanted to test because i was curious because five years from now you know it's not a warranty and i happen to have a drive laying around and i just want this system to be up and running and have to replace one yeah that's a complete possibility you can do that oh but maybe by then there'll be a dsm update that stops the stupid error message from telling us that it's a non-synology drive but overall, I think it's a solid system. All the testing we did here over time at the office, no problems with it. We had like absolutely trouble free and uh, very reliable. The IOPS we got were pretty impressive. See the benchmark video down below. And overall, I still like a lot of the Synology offering they have. And this is a good piece of hardware to match up with some of that software that they offer for things like backups and everything else. All right. If you have some comments, concerns, leave them down below. If you want a more in-depth discussion on this, you can head over to the forums and connect with me there and we can talk to or argue about some of the points and merits of the way Synology designed this because it's always fun to have an active discussion on it. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a short project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you. You know, it doesn't bother me, but I feel if all these aren't lined up properly, before I do this video, someone will be like, there's one out of order and it really bothers me. You know, the little things I do for you, all my uh, people on YouTube that watch that are, I know have issues with things not being lined up. This is all in the 
stuff done before the video, but I put it after the video because who cares about this? Well, someone does because one of these is not in the right order. <laughs>